finding points of intersection for complex equations. So this is really the same thing we've been doing, still systems of equations, which is they're both going to be quadratic instead of one of them being quadratic, one of them being linear. So it's a little bit more difficult, there's more steps. The key thing here is to remember how to factor. So remember back to a couple years ago when you learned how to factor quadratic equations. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is basically we have two different equations and they're both set equal to y. So instead of writing f of x, we could write y, and in g of x, we could write y. It doesn't matter, but the point is that they're both set equal to a y term. So if they're both set equal to y, then like in any other, we can do substitution and just set them equal to each other. So we have 5x squared minus 14x minus 50 equals 2x squared minus 8x plus 22. Okay, and then now you, if you remember back to your um, to the first unit, then we put all our like terms together. So I'm going to subtract the 2x squared. And I'm going to add 8x. And then I'm going to subtract 22. So what I would then have is a 3x squared minus 6x minus 72 equals 0. Okay, so now is where your factoring comes in. If we remember how to factor, we can split this up right here, and all of these are going to break up nicely. Uh, maybe not in the future, but for now, they're all going to be nice. So we're going to break it up like that, so we know we have to have a 3x and an x, because when we start our foiling, when we do our first terms, 3x times x is 3x squared, which is what we need. And then we need to multi have our last numbers multiplied together to get 72 and add together to get negative 6x. So what we want to do is find our factors of 72. Factors of 72 are 1 times 72. Uh, the next one could be 2 times 36. And we would have, I think, 4 times 18, and we could have 6 times 12, or we could have uh, 8 times 9. And those are all of our factors of 72. Now what we have to do is find two that multiply together to get 72, so that's these, and then they add together to get a negative 6 but that would be when we take into account multiplying them times those x's. So you just trial and error, pick one and see if it works, and if it doesn't work, then try again. For example, if we just picked uh, 8 and 9 and try to see if that works. One of these has to be plus, one of these has to be minus, because that sign is a negative sign. So if we pick 9 and 8... And if we tried to FOIL it back out, we would get 3x squared minus 18, sorry, 27x plus 8x minus 72. So we got the minus 72 right, and we got the 3x squared right. But in here, if we add those together, we do not get negative 6. So that one doesn't work. So we try again. Try something else. You can try flipping your numbers around, flipping your signs around, or whatever you got to do. So 3x and x equals 0. Okay, so I'm going to pick a different one. Let's pick uh, 4 and 18. I want a little bit more difference because that 3 is going to skew things a lot more. So we have 18 and 4, and we need to have 1 plus and 1 minus. Since it's negative, I want the bigger number to be negative. And then if we tried to foil it back out, 3x squared plus 12x 
minus 18x minus 72 equals 0. So if we add those together, we get negative 6x, which is what we wanted. So now we have our correct foiling. So we have 3x minus 18 and x plus 4, and that is equal to 0. So now we just have to solve. So to solve this, if we set either term equal to 0, then the whole thing's going to be 0. So we split it apart. 3x minus 18 equals 0, and x plus 4 equals 0. And then we solve. So add the 18. 3x equals 18. Divide by 3 x equals 6. The other one, subtract the 4, and x equals negative 4. So those are our two possible x's. Well, we found out before that if we're solving equations, we have to find an x and a y. So now we have to find a y. So we pick either equation, the g or the uh, f of x function, and we solve. So if I pick the g function, Let's recall that g of x equals a 2x squared minus 8x plus 22. And you can use either equation. I just use this one because it's got smaller numbers. So I'm going to pick, put that in, put 6 in. 2 times 6 squared minus 8 times 6 plus 22. So 2 times 36 is 72 minus 8 times 6, which is a 48 plus 22. And then we just add those all together, and we should get 46. So what that means is my point of intersection is 6, 46, because this is our y. But we have that other x, so we have to do the same thing with the other x value. So put it in, g of negative 4 equals 2 times negative 4 squared minus 8 times negative 4 plus 22. And then I solve. 2 times 16 is 32. And then we have negative 8 times negative 4, which is a positive 32, plus 22. 32 plus 32 plus 22 is 86. So y equals 86. Therefore, my point of intersection is negative 4, 86. And those are your two answers. For this next example, same thing needs to happen. f of x equals 7x squared plus 6x plus 10. g of x equals 3x squared minus 2x plus 6. So we set them equal to each other because right now they are both equal to y. So we set the two y's equal to each other. 7x squared plus 6x plus 10 equals... 3x squared minus 2x plus 6. And then we just put all our common terms together. So I'm going to subtract the 3x squared, add the 2x, and subtract the 6. All right, so what I have is 4x squared plus 8x plus 4 equals a 0. All right, so now the next part is to do our factoring. Again, this will be a little bit of trial and error, possibly, until you get in the habit of doing it. So we need to find our factors of 4. And we need to find, well, the factors of 4 here, too, because we need to multiply together to get a 4x squared. So that would be a 2 
times 2 or a 1 times 4. This one's nice because there's fewer options to choose from. Okay, and also we see that this second sign is plus, so that means both signs in here are going to be the same, and they're both going to be plus. So plus, plus. That's going to make it easier as well. All right, so now you just got to figure out what I'm multiplying together. Well, I'm going to just try 2x and 2x there, because if I multiply 2x times 2x, I get 4x squared. So I know that's going to work. So let's just try that, and if not, then we can try mixing in the other factors. Then I need to use one of these two factors to multiply together to get this 4 right here and add together to get 8x. So if I put uh, 2 and 2, try 2 and 2 again, and again, if it doesn't work out, then you can do it the other way. So if I FOIL that back out to check, 4x squared plus 4x plus 4x plus 4, then that is 4x squared plus 8x plus 4, which is what I wanted. That was my original equation, so I'm good. That means my factoring is 2x plus 2 and 2x plus 2 equals 0. So now I should notice that these are both the same. So I only have to do it once. If they're the same, then you only have to do it once. If they're different, that's where it gets more complicated. So set, set it equal to 0. So I have 2x plus 2 equals 0. Subtract 2 minus 2. 2x equals a negative... 2 divide by 2 x equals negative 1 once I have my x I put it into one of my original equations it doesn't matter which one whether it's the F or the G if I put it into the G then I'm looking for G of negative 1 which would be 3 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1 plus 6 so I solve this, get 3 times positive 1, which is just 3. Um, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2 and plus 6. So th 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus 6 is 11. So y equals 11. Therefore, my final answer is negative 1, 11. And in this case, there's only one answer because both of these were the same. Okay, if they're different, then you're going to have multiple answers. But if they're the same, you only have the one answer. Those are your notes over finding points of intersection for complex equations. Go through the practice problems. Make sure you actually go through these. The factoring takes a little while to get the hang of. You need to do these practice problems and then prepare for the quiz.